Hello, my name is Chris Wendt from Microsoft Research. We have this product called Microsoft Translator with an extension called the Microsoft Translator Hub. And our users ask us many questions about the right way to evaluate the quality of machine translation and the quality of their own customized machine translation. Dr. Will Lewis from the Microsoft Translator team is here with us to shed some light. Right to the first question. What is the purpose of evaluating the quality of automatic translation and what are our users able to do with this? No, that's a, that's a very good question. So to answer that question, I mean, as you know, automatic translation is used uh, in a variety of scenarios for translating uh, documents from one language into another language. Uh, and uh, the reason for translating documents automatically could be that you want to translate them uh, for direct human, human consumption you might want to translate them in a post-editing scenario where uh, uh, the output is actually then edited by a human for uh, subsequent consumption, or maybe to generate output that uh, other machines might use for data mining or uh, extraction of content or what have you. So is the basis of an evaluation always a previously done human translation? Do I always need to have that in order to make an evaluation? Uh, yes, generally uh, we want to have a human translation to compare against. So automatic metrics typically use as a reference uh, a human translation and you compare the quality of the output from the machine translation engine against that human reference. Um, and we can measure uh, factors such as just a, you know, some uh, very generic difference between the uh, reference and the machine translation output or we can look at other factors such as linguistic quality, uh, word order and other things that actually we, uh, we can measure. Um, but since the point of machine translation is to generate output that is uh, understandable and readable by humans, we use as our reference point human translations. Well, can you walk us through the different methods of automatically scoring the quality of, uh, of translation? I understand there's automatic scoring as well as other methods. Let's look at the automatic scoring methods okay. first. So can okay. you give us an overview of that? Yeah, so uh, there are multiple methods for automatic scoring. The basic notion of automatic scoring is to have a reference that you actually compare against, and then you generate what we call a score. So there's, a, there's an actual number assigned to the difference between the machine translation output and the human translation reference. Um, and there are multiple methods that are actually used for uh, automatic evaluation. Um, the point of automatic evaluation is that it's fast and cheap. If, uh, if I want to look at multiple uh, uh, languages, say in comparison, are these automatic uh, scoring methods giving me any indication that allows me to compare between languages? So is, is a score comparable between language A and language B? The automatic scoring method that's typically used or that, and that we use is BLUE, uh, spelled B-L-E-U. And the BLUE score is basically an automatic method that looks at um, the machine translation output and the human reference. So what about comparing the quality of a, say, a rule-based machine translation engine and a statistical machine translation right. engine? Does the BLUE score or any automatic score help me there? The, the kind of fundamental uh, comparison point for blue is the word and so it, and it's kind of a, a statistical it's biased towards statistical engines so phrase-based engines tend to fare better in blue than than rule-based engines so if you have a score uh, of a certain number on a rule-based engine and comparing it against a, a phrase-based engine isn't exactly fair because the rule-based engine will be penalized which scoring method do you use uh, at Microsoft for instance to improve Bing translator the method that we use in Bing Translator is actually a, a blue score, as I mentioned earlier, uh, spelled uh, B-L-E-U. And a blue score is a measure of the difference between the human translation and the machine translation output. And it looks at uh, uh, the pr presence or absence of particular words as well as their ordering and the uh, degree of distortion, how, how much they actually are, are separated in the, uh, in the output. The blue score is typically measured on a zero to one scale, so it's a it's a, a, a effectively a probability that's assigned to that output, and we oftentimes uh, multiply that number by a hundred and uh, give it as a percent. So we'll talk about a blue score of say 35 or a blue score of 
of 42, and that more or less means that we've taken the, the actual output and multiplied it by 100. So 100 would mean per, a perfect match. Yes, that's Zero right. Zero would mean that's that there exactly is right. no yeah. single word the yeah. same in no, the that's a, that's reference. a good point. Absolutely. So the blue score measures the difference between the input and output. If there's no words in common between the human the machine translated output and the human translated reference, then it would be assigned a score of zero. If they're exactly the same, including the order uh, of the translation, then it gets a score of one or 100. Can you explain the difference between uh, autom differences between automatic uh, evaluation and, and, and human scoring? Yes, absolutely. So a blue has been shown to be highly correlated with human evaluations. And that's one of the reasons that we're able to use it, uh, because we can use it as a surrogate for uh, an actual human evaluation. Um, but some of the problems with blue is it's very sensitive to uh, the words that are present in the input, uh, or excuse me, in the output of the machine translation engine. So if we break the words differently uh, um, using what's called a word breaker from um, in our machine translation output, it can actually give us a different blue score. Word breaking sounds like it would be something that's fairly trivial, and actually it isn't. And it's especially not trivial with languages such as Chinese or Thai, where the notion of word is flexible or where the notion of word is not completely clear. Blue, it's important that you basically take into account what word breaker is being used and between uh, uh, the comparisons that you're doing. I have the different uh, machine translation vendors quote different blue scores uh, uh, to me. What else do I need to watch out for when, when, when somebody quotes a blue score to me? I mean, it gets back, at, first of all, since we had talked about word breakers already, uh, the word breaker obviously has an impact on uh, the, uh, the, the blue score that's actually quoted. So that needs to be taken into account. Uh, typically, if you have multiple references, the blue score tends to be higher. So if you hear a very large uh, blue score, someone gives you a, a value that seems very high, you can ask them if there are multiple references that are being used, because then that is the reason that the score is actually higher. So what is the test that's, be that's being used? Uh, so a, a blue score by itself really is not uh, as mean, is not meaningful in isolation. You need to really have to know what uh, what's being tested as well. What is the test set? So if you're comparing uh, blue scores between two dis different systems and there are two different test sets that are being used, then they're not they're not co comparable uh, scores. You need to be measuring against a standard test set or uh, be using the same test set in both scenarios. Or um, probably it makes sense to use my own test. Yeah. That, that comes out of my own application scenario. Abs absolutely. If, if you have uh, your own test set and have the ability to measure it against another engine, for instance, that is going to be the most meaningful <laughs> result, especially if that test set is representative of the translations that you want to produce uh, from your particular machine translation engine. In Microsoft Translator Hub, I'm getting a blue score after every training that, that I'm doing. What is it telling me? So the blue score that you receive after training gives you a sense of the quality of that particular machine translation that you've built. So each training uh, will produce a different blue score. Um, so the blue score then gives you a sense of the improvement, how you're actually, how the engine's actually improving and gives you a sense of, what, of the direction that you actually want to go in. So higher blue scores are better. I always see two numbers. So I see the uh, I see the blue score yeah. and a, 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 a say a negative or a positive number behind that. What does that tell me? Okay. So uh, the blue score in the hub basically is measured not only against your engine; it's also measuring against our generic uh, purpose engine, basically one that's not trained on your particular data. So the difference you you see there is the difference between your engine and the generic engine. It also you can compare. Uh, uh, different iterations of your engine as well over time. So it can, you can compare your engine now against the, uh, the training that you did, uh, let's say, a week ago. We talked about the, uh, the, the, the test set, uh, the, the blue score being relative to the test set. Mm -hmm. When I design my test set, what do I need to pay attention to? So the, the hub allows me to, to either have the hub automatically select the test set or uh, 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 give me a chance to define my own. Right. Let's say I define my own, what would, how would I do that and what's the, the purpose of that? Okay. The hub automatically, uh, as, you meant, as you indicated, automatically, you can actually t uh, tell it to automatically generate your own test set. 
Um, by doing that, it basically samples uh, sentences from your training data to produce a test set that you can continue, uh, can continue to use. Now, one of the things it does when it actually samples that test set is to ensure that, that the test data that's in that test set does not overlap with the data that's in the training data. And that's actually very important. Uh, so if you're producing your own test set, you need to ensure that the test data in your test set do not overlap with the training data that you're training on. That actually invalidates the results if they actually do overlap. You also want to have a test set that's representative of the kinds of translations that you want to do. So what, what is it that you want to output? What is the kind of documents that you're going to be passing through your engine? You want your test set to be as representative as possible of the kind of content that you're actually going to be translating using your engine. That's good. That's an, that's an interesting aspect. Yeah. I need to make a good guess of what I'm going to translate in the, in the future and choose what looks very right. similar. Well, you want to measure the quality improvements or the, the quality on content that matters to you, not some other content that doesn't, isn't relevant. Well, in addition to the test data, the hub also asks me to define tuning data. And I can either uh, have that selected automatically or I can submit my own uh, tuning set. What is this tuning data used for? That's a very good question. Tuning data is, the, uh, is basically uh, another kind of training data. It's used to set the large number of parameters that are used by the machine translation to generate its output. So it's another kind of training data. Now, typically, uh, tuning data is drawn from the same set of material or the same content as your test data is. You want them to kind of match because basically the tuning data is used to set the parameters to make the machine translation engine do better on data that looks like the tuning data. So if your test data is like your tuning data, then you're going to do better on your test data because of that. Um, it's also important that your tuning data not overlap with your training data so that the content is distinct between the two and that your tuning data does not overlap with your test data either. It can be the same kind of content, but it can't be the exact same content. That makes sense, but why can't I just use the tuning data to also give me the, uh, give me the score? Because tuning data is training data, you don't want to use the tuning data as your test data. So you need to have a, uh, an, an independent source of testing data. Yeah. So you get you get really useful scores only if you keep it clean, so to yeah, speak. That's that's yeah, so right. Don't contaminate right. your your test with what you used previously. That's in, right. In building the engine. Yeah. I mean, yes. the the engine when it's actually training does use does calculate blue scores, for instance, against that tuning data. That's part of the mechanism that it uses to basically maximize the value on that on that tuning data. The Microsoft Translator Hub gives me the option to train uh, a on a particular project uh, repeatedly, uh, presumably with, uh, with the intent of me changing something in between. So what are the things I can change? What are the things I should change in order to optimize the system for my, for my purpose? You often will make changes between each training. You'll make changes to the data. So what you want to do is to uh, have the best selection of data to, uh, to give you the, the best blue score, the best output uh, uh, for your test set. Adding in documents or removing documents maybe that aren't helping uh, and then retraining uh, can help you to basically improve uh, your blue score over time. It might be that you've decided that you want to increase the size of your tuning set or you have some additional content you want to add to that tuning set. What you typically don't want to do is change your test data um, because if you change your test data, then you invalidate the previous results. You're not going to be able to directly compare the results from your current test set against an older test set. Now, you may want to change the test set at some point, but you, you don't want to do that with each training. You want to keep the test set constant and then change the other parameters that you can change, which are your training data and your tuning data. Good. So I did that a couple of times uh, on my say English-French project. I got a score of 32.6. What does it mean, 32.6? Is that good or bad? Uh, I can't say whether 32.6 is, is a good blue score or a bad blue score. It kind of depends on the scenario, and it depends on comparisons against what you've trained before. Uh, we talked about the um, automatic evaluation uh, now, but you also mentioned the, the, the option of, of human evaluation. Right. What is that good for? The ultimate test of a machine translation e engine is human eval. We basically want the the uh, want to have a sense of how good that engine is 
uh, or how the engine is perceived by humans, how good the output is for human consumption. Uh, now, at Microsoft, we basically use a, a one to four scale for measuring the quality of the machine translation output using human evaluators. Uh, one means that it's uh, uh, not good at all. It's a it's really bad translation. Four means it's perfect, it means it's really good. Uh, and we typically have a set of four evaluators uh, and we, we have them evaluate the output. They, uh, and then they each assign scores to the output for a set of sentences within a test set. And then we average across those sets of evaluate. So, well, now we talked about the, uh, the absolute scoring that gives me just one, one, one score uh, on the test set. Uh, what else uh, can one do or what else do you do uh, uh, with the human evaluators? Yeah, well, often we actually uh, don't just look at, uh, at absolute scores on a particular engine. We'll look at uh, uh, differences, so relative scores between like two iterations of the same engine or uh, comparative scores from this engine to say some competitor's engine. And that actually is, is really useful. We'll actually have the human evaluators look at the, uh, the output from two different engines and then assign a score ba a relative to each of them. So you'll get a one to four uh, number of some type for each engine. And that actually proves to be quite useful in uh, doing evals uh, in these kinds of scenarios. Yeah. So the, the judge then looks at the human reference that's right. and the output from engine one and the output yes, from engine that's two. That's absolutely and that's absolutely true. Yeah. Uh, we can also, uh, uh, if we have bilingual evaluator, bilingual evaluators, we can have them actually look at the source too, and then make a judgment call as to what the quality of the uh, the uh, translation output is, and then we're asking them to assign scores based on their judgments about the quality. So it's not necessary to hire experts. Uh, yeah in this yeah. field to basically do the human evaluation. Yeah. Or in, in the way, case of... In a way, yeah. you don't want them to be experts. You want them to be regular users or uh, potential users of your service. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Will. That makes uh, perfect sense to me. And it answered, uh, answered my questions that I had for you today. And I hope it answered uh, your questions as well. Thank you very much for watching this conversation. Thank you. Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available.